I do not know how fast or how slow we're going to go today. Uh, the activity that we have in a little bit is over just the power rule, but I feel that we can do more than just power rule, but we'll see. Uh, so let's, let's talk about derivative of a constant. So it's telling me here in this table, and it says rule number one. We're not counting rules. It's coming from your demand textbook. It says here that the derivative of a constant is always zero. Can you guys tell me why? Yeah, so if you have like a value like y equals three, isn't that just a horizontal line? And doesn't horizontal lines have slopes of zero? So that's why the derivative of every constant is just zero. So example one, it says for the following, find dy dx for the following functions below. So that means derivative with respect to x. So dy dx for five is zero. Dy dx, I'm going to use a different notation. Y prime for negative 10 is also 0. And I'm going to use a different notation for this one. D dx of y is also 0. Notice all of them are 0. Why? Because they're constants. What's up, Abdul Karim? Okay, what do you mean by constants? Do you mean like a constant slope? Or do you mean like. No, they're constants. Oh, well, they're not vertical lines. These are horizontal lines. Yes, they're horizontal lines. And horizontal lines have zero slope. Oh, okay. Yay or nay? All right, you're about to learn something that's going to be amazing. You guys ready? So I'm going to give you the, the, the derivative, and then you're going to tell me. No, no, no. Let me see. How should we do this? Okay. So don't write this down, just listen. If I were to tell you that I want the derivative of letter B, x to the seventh, you would tell me f prime of x equals limit as h approaches zero of f of, you know what, let me go ahead and just write in terms of x plus h closer to the seventh power minus x to the seventh power all over h, right? And then you would have to expand the exponential to the seventh power. It's not a big deal if you know Pascal's triangle, uh, but if you don't know it, it might be a headache for you. Uh, and then you would do a lot of algebra, correct? All right, so I'm going to tell you the derivative of all of these, and then you tell me what I'm doing. Like, see if you see a pattern. F prime of x for letter A is 2x. For letter B, F prime of x is 7x to the 6. That's a derivative. If I were to do all this limit mumbo jumbo. Letter C, f prime of x is equal to negative 5x to the negative 6. Do you see a pattern? Yes. What about this one? Ah, uh, That one doesn't have a power. That's yes, power. it does. Yeah, it has a power of a half. x to the power of a half. That's not derivative. So that one, f prime of x, would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which if I wanted to write it in terms of square root, would look like this, 1 over 2 square root of x. Do you remember finding the derivative of square root of x and we got this? No? Yes? Okay, in case you don't remember, let's do it. Let's do it one time the old school way. So f prime, so here I am, let me color code it. I'm circling this in blue. I'm going to do that one the old school way in blue. So I'm going to write f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of square root of x plus h minus square root of x all over h. What would you have done in the past? Multiply by the conjugate. So I'd go square root of x plus h plus square root of x over square root of x plus h plus square root of x, and then we would get limit as h approaches 0, and then square root times square root, the square root goes away, we would get x plus h, and then square root of x times square root of x, again, the, it's just going to be minus x, all over h parenthesis, square root of x plus h, plus square root of x, close it, the x is 0 out, now the h cancels out, and this h on the inside is approaching 0, so that means I have 
1 over, there's two of them, square root of x plus square root of x. So that's the same thing as 1 over 2 square root of x. Look at all that work you had to do just to get to here. And look at the one in red, how we just got it so fast. Okay, so now you can write down whatever you want to write down. This rule is called the power rule. And they have a number next to it. Delete it. Who cares? It's from your demand textbook. What is it called? Power rule. Don't worry about it. It says for positive integers. It works for all, for all exponents. As long as your exponent is an integer, is a, is a number. Sorry. Chavez, what are you trying to say? That I can have, if I have a function, so let me create another letter, letter E, and I can have something like f of x equals 1 over 3 to the fourth root of x. We can get that derivative really fast by doing this. 1 over 3 parenthesis x to the 1 fourth. And then I would like to bring that up, so I'm going to write it like this. One third x to the negative one fourth. Do you guys see what I did? And then I'm just going to do my power rule. So I, I make a new line and I go f prime of x equals what is one third times negative one fourth? Negative one over 12 x. And then according to this, it says subtract one. So I just subtract one from that. So that's like four over four. So negative 1 minus 4 is a negative 5. Negative 5 over 4. And you can leave it like that. How do you feel? Do you feel like you've been lied to all this time? Yeah. No, you haven't been lied to. That's This is the beauty of math, guys. They notice the pattern. Who, who's they? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Leibniz and Newton. They noticed the pattern whenever they were doing this process. And whenever they were finding, quote, unquote, a derivative, and this is going to change, they noticed that all the polynomials had this pattern. And because they noticed this pattern, they said, we're not going to do the whole limit process over and over again. We're just going to use it by this rule. And that's how math, this is why math is so beautiful. You can create something complicated and make it simple. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So there it is. We're going to practice now. A whole bunch of practice. This one's called the constant multiple rule. It, it doesn't really even, it's not even worthy, to be honest, TBH. Um, I'm going to tell you what to do in the beginning. But then I'm going to tell you how we really do it. Cool? So just, just listen. Don't write anything down at the moment. So this is saying if u is differentiable function of x and c is a constant, then, so this is telling me to leave the c alone and take the derivative of that u by itself. So don't write this down because in reality we don't really do do this. We just I'll show you what we reality we do. So what it's telling me to do is this, is do this dy dx is telling me leave the constant alone five. Don't write this down, and then take the derivative of x squared, which is what I don't know two x just two x. See what we did there? So then we get dy dx, and don't worry. I'm gonna give you time to write down. Don't write this down. It's ten x. I'm gonna show you in a little bit uh, another way of how to do it fast which you probably already see it. So what the rule is saying again is telling me to dy dx, leave the 7 alone, take the derivative of the x cubed, which is 3x to the what power? Squared. What's 7 times 3? 7, 14, 21. 21x squared. Don't worry. We're going to give you time. Don't write this down. Just listen. Again, same thing on this, guys. I'm going to write y prime instead. Leave the constant alone. Derivative of that is going to be negative 5x to the negative 6. If you want to have a positive exponent, that's fine. Y prime equals uh, 20, 40, 60, 81. So 100, X is negative 6. You can write it as Y prime equals 100 over X to the 6. All these are correct. And don't worry, I'm going to give you time in a little bit. This is the same thing as 8X to the half. That is not a derivative. I just rewrote it. So here it is. Y prime equals, what's half of 8? Oh, no, don't do that yet. 8, 1 half, X to the negative 1 half. So y prime equals 4x to the negative 1 half, so which you could also leave it as 4 over square root of x. Okay. No, I, I would leave it as square root of x. All right. Here is what we really do. So what is that called? That's called the constant multiple rule. 
It's too much steps to do that. Here's what you really do. You see that two? Just go ahead and immediately multiply by five. Two times five, 10 X. Okay, letter B. You see that seven? Take that three, the power, and then multiply by seven. What's seven times three? 21, reduce it by one, so 21 X squared. You see that negative five? Do the same thing. To what negative 20 times negative 5? 100 x to the negative 6. You see that 8? What's half of 8? 4 and then subtract 1 from the half. x to the negative half. Do you see how we did it? That's probably how you're going to be doing it because it's faster. Instead of like, oh, leave the constant alone, blah, blah, blah. What, and you, sometimes you guys get confused. You're like, Thomas, but you said the derivative of constant is 0. Yes, but this is not a constant. This is a product of 20 and an x and a variable. You know what I mean? Okay. How do we feel right now, guys? Okay. Alvarez, tell me. How do you feel? Okay. Write it down. Write it down. Now you can write down whatever you feel you can write. Oh, all square roots are exponentials, right? So if I have a third root, that's x to the one-third. Right? Yes. 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 You see how first you got to, no matter what, you have to convert that into an exponential. So you're going to write y equals 8x to the half. Yes or no? Okay. Now look what the power rule says. The power rule says, it says nx to the n minus 1. So whatever exponent you had, you multiply it by whatever you have in the front. So I have this half. What is 1 half times 8? 4. Do you see what I did, Tovar? And then I write the, ex the expression again, x. And then I subtract 1 from the exponent because that's what my power rule says. It says n minus 1. So what is 1? And I'll write it here, 1 minus half. So that is y prime equals 4x to the negative half. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. 1 half minus 1. That's a mistake on my part. Sorry, YouTube. Don't, uh, don't thumb down my video. 1 half minus 1. Sometimes I turn dyslexic. It's always, I think I've just never been diagnosed, but uh, ever since elementary... Every, I don't do it often, but since elementary, I've done that mistake where I just switched the numbers. I don't know. So, someone must have never caught it. I don't do it often enough, but I do it. So that I think I am dyslexic at some level. Cool. All right. Okay. Here we go, guys. Again, it says rule four. Who cares? We're not counting how many rules there are. All this is possible. By the way, all this is possible because of my limit. We understand that, right? Yes. Okay. So all this is saying, let's read what it says. If u and v are differential functions of x, then their sum and difference are differentiable at every point where u and v are differentiable at such points. Oh, so Chavez, what does that mean? So if I'm taking the derivative of u plus v, you just take the derivative of u, and then you, if it's a plus symbol, keep the plus symbol, and then you just take the derivative of v. Chavez, what does that mean in terms of regular? This is what it means. Let me show you. Uh, I thought that, okay. So this one says differentiate the polynomial. Notice it has a P and the letters are in terms of T. So I'm taking the derivative of P with respect to T. So dP dt. Yes. It's a function of P in terms of T. So I'm taking the derivative of P with respect to T. So dP dt. What is the derivative of T cubed? 3t squared. Yeah, you can say 3t squared or 3t to the second power. Does everyone understand that? Okay, there's a plus symbol, so I keep going. Plus, and then I just take the derivative of the next term. What is the derivative of 6t squared? 12t. Ooh, let's see if you guys get this one here. Uh, there's a minus sign, I put a minus. What is the derivative of the 5 third t? Or 5 over 3t? So it's negative 5 thirds. Okay, yeah. If you subtract 1 from the power, 
you get a t to the zero, and t to the zero is one. But you don't need, don't you don't have to do that because a linear line, the rate of change of a linear line is always the same. Does that make sense? Okay, it didn't make sense, uh, Gonzalez. Okay, so on the side, if I have something like y equals five x, what's my slope? There it is. Isn't derivative, doesn't derivative mean slope? Yeah. So when I said right now, Gonzalez, I said this is a linear term, negative 5 thirds t. So what's, if I just had negative 5 thirds t by itself, what's the slope of negative 5 thirds t? Negative 5 thirds. Do you see what I mean? Okay. What's the derivative of a constant? There it is, guys. Done. You can put zero if you want, but there it is. How do we feel? Do we feel okay? Yeah, now we just need practice. That's all, or, or you don't feel okay? Uh, Boyle doesn't feel right. Wait, so don't worry, we're going to do some more, Boyle. Yeah, yeah, we just need to practice. So check it out. Here's an application problem, guys. Finding horizontal tangents. Does the curve y equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 2 have any horizontal tangents? If so, where? All right. Let's find the derivative. And I'm going to equal that to, what am I going to equal the derivative to? Zero. And I'm going to solve for x. Because derivative means slope, instantaneous slope. So here we go. y prime equals, what's the derivative of x to the fourth? 4x cubed minus, what's the derivative of 2x squared? 4x, and I'm going to equal this expression to 0, because I want the slope to be 0. Does everyone understand that? Yes. All right, now I'm going to solve for x, and at those x values, I'm going to have horizontal tangents. So here we go. <coughs> I'm going to factor out a 4x. You're done with calculus. The rest is algebra. And you're going to have, what is that, x uh, squared minus 1? So this has three horizontal tangents. Go ahead, miss. I have a horizontal tangent at 0, and I have a horizontal tangent at plus minus 1. Does everyone see that? Okay. How do we, oh, how do we get the plus minus 1? Uh, I set the expression x squared minus 1 equal to 0, x, equals, x squared equals 1, square root, square root, x equals plus minus 1. Okay. Let's see if this is true. I'm going to go to Desmos, and you guys are going to tell me that expression. So let's see. Oh, 4x. 4 times what gives me 0 if x is 0? Yeah, you got to do all the x's, right? You got the pass, right? Thank you, miss. Thank you for... Give me my phone. I need to remember to transfer to transfer Desmos to my school account. Okay, personal Desmos. All right, hook me up with the um, with the equation. Let me put y equals because I want to be proper. I know Desmos will graph it. 4x cubed, 4x cubed, no, 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 the, the, yeah, the original. Oh, the original was x, x to the 4th minus 2x. x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus 2. All right, check it out. Didn't they tell me that I have a horizontal tangent on negative 1? And a negative 1, I sure do. Look at 0. Do I have a horizontal tangent at 0? Yeah. yeah, I sure do at 0. And then one more at? Oh, at 1. Cool, right? All right. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what this says. Find the tangents to the curve. All right, guys, focus, focus, focus. Find the tangents to the curve, y equals x cubed plus x, at the points where the slope is 4. 
What is the smallest slope of this curve? Now, what value of x does this curve have this slope? Okay, you guys ready? Let's take a derivative. y prime equals 3x squared plus 1. The derivative of x is 1. And they want to know where this slope is what? I don't know. 4. So I'm going to equal it to 4. And I'm going to solve for that. 3x squared minus 1 minus 1 equals 3. x squared equals 1. x equals plus minus 1. Have I confused anyone? Okay. So at 1 and at negative 1, I have tangent slopes of 4. Does that make sense? Okay. And then they also want to know, what is the smallest slope on this curve? So focus on the y prime. What is the smallest 3x squared plus 1 will ever be? Yeah, it's 1. It's 1. It will never be 0. It will never be negative. Do you guys see that? In case you're wondering, Chavez, how can I tell just by looking at it? You can look at the range. The, y, the output of this are your slopes. So notice that this will give me this graph. This is y prime, by the way. This is not y. So at 0, at x equals 0, my smallest slope of 1 happens. Do you guys see that? Do you guys want to see how this curve looks? x cubed plus x? All right, let's see. x cubed plus x. Let's clear it. y equals x cubed plus x. And then it told me that I have a slope of 4 where and where? Oh, my God. What? Oh, one and negative 1. I've got to zoom out. Yep, it looks like I do. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and figure out this tangent slope. If I plug in a 1, you get 1 plus 1 is 2. All right, so look. Let's see if it really does. Let's see if it looks tangent. y minus 2. And we said that it has a slope of 4. So I'll put 4, parenthesis, x minus 1. Yeah, that definitely looks tangent. Look at that. Let me, yeah, that looks awesome. Now let's look at the other one and see if it's parallel. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 plus 1 is 0, right? So y equals 4 and then x plus 1, right? x plus 1. Let's see, I can't see it, but let's find out. Nope, that does not work in. Where, where did I mess up? Did we not get negative 1? No, it should be negative 1. Because negative 1 cubed is 1. Negative 1 plus 1? Plus negative 1. Negative 1, no, the function is x cubed plus x. x cubed plus x. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 plus, plus negative 1 is 0. Oh. Plus negative 1. Y minus, well, y plus 2. Y minus, because negative 1 cubed negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. So plus 1? No, no, so y minus. Oh, yes, yes, got you. No. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Yes. Plus, plus 1. Negative 1. Oh, yeah. So Stupid. Plus y minus 2. Yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah, how come you guys didn't tell me, guys? It's the same thing. Oh, wait, why? No, you're right, you're right. Man, mistakes mistakes galore. Now we're good. All right, yeah, it looks good now. Look, it looks good now, guys. It doesn't look like it's a negative 1, though. Oh, yeah, it is right there. Negative 1, and here's the curve. Let's plug in that point. Negative 1, comma... Negative 1. No, negative 2. Yeah, we're good. There's my tangent. And then the other one's at 1, 2. And that's my tangent. Yeah, we're good. What's up? Oh, because my expression for my derivative is 3x squared plus 1. And this will never be negative. The lowest it'll ever be is 
one, and that happens at zero. So at zero, I have a slope of one. So if I plug it in, yeah, if I were to do a uh, tangent slope at zero, what would it be zero plus zero? So it's just going to be y equals x, y equals x. Yeah, there it is. There's my tangent. Look at that. Beautiful. There's my tangent right through there. What's up? Three x plus one. If the derivative was three x plus one, then I have negative slopes for like as soon as for a negative one third, right? Like so three x plus three it's just an expression that tells you how your slope behaves. You know what I mean? Yeah, so if you have a linear derivative, your smallest slope it goes for to negative infinity forever. Okay. I think we're good. Sorry for the hiccups. Don't give me a thumbs down, YouTube. Uh, all right. We're not going to talk about the product rule yet. Uh, let's see. Let's do questions that we can do right now. We're not going to do the question rule. Higher derivatives. Go to example 11. Yeah, last page. So you can take more than one derivative, guys. Uh, eventually, unless you're a spring, uh, eventually the derivative is going to zero out. Right? A spring is different. A piston is different. But we're not talking about that. Uh, because remember what we're doing. We're finding a rate of change. And if you take another derivative, you're finding a rate of change of a rate of change. And if you take another derivative, you're finding the rate of change of the rate of change of the rate of change. Does that make sense? So eventually, eventually it would zero out unless I said you're a spring or a piston. So it says find higher order derivatives. Find the first four derivatives. So here we go. All these are notations for first, second, third derivative, and I'm going to use them all so you guys can get accustomed to them. Y prime. 3x squared minus 10x. Does everyone agree? If I want to find the second derivative, I go y prime prime. So two primes means second derivative. What's the second derivative of 3x squared? 6x. If I want to find the third derivative, I go y prime prime prime. Yeah. Minus 10. Yeah. Mistakes galore, sorry. I was, I was just writing whatever you told me, so it's on you. No, I'm kidding, guys. I'm trying to say it. A lack of sleep, lack of sleep. Y prime, 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 prime. Zero. Usually they start using Roman numerals after the third one, but that's fine. No, you're good, you're good. So, um, yeah, it has four little primes. That's not the only way to say first, uh, second derivative or first derivative. So here we go, guys. I'm going to go ahead and say it again. This is the same thing as saying dy dx. This is the same thing as saying d squared y over dx squared. This is the same thing as saying d cubed y over dx cubed. And this is the same thing as saying d fourth y over dx to the fourth. So if you want the nth derivative, it's going to be d to the n power y over dx to the n. This is your nth derivative. Cool or not cool? Cool. And where does it come from? Why do they do that notation? It's based off of this. So let's say I have dy dx. And I'm taking the derivative of this, d dx. So the way they do it, don't write this down, just listen. Uh, you see how there's two d's right here when you're multiplying? That would be d squared y. And then I know that they don't put parentheses on them, but notice that dx, there's, just two, there's two of them. So it's like saying dx close it squared like that. It's like doing that. But they don't put the parentheses. It's just common notation. How do we feel? All right, so all you're doing right now, 
is logging into Delta and getting familiar with the power rule. And that is it. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go ahead and continue. This is now called the product rule. So yesterday we learned the power rule. So you no longer have to be doing all those long limits. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So let's let's go ahead and I can't do okay. that. Let's un let's unplug guys, please. Sorry, I'm not trying to be extra, just okay, so here we go. The product rule. Here's how it works. All it says is, is you see this, it says U times V, the, the product, obviously. And this, all it says is first times the root of the second plus the second times the root of the first. Okay, you guys say it with me. First times the root of the second plus the second times the root of the first. Now, when you go to delta, delta is going to reverse the order. Uh, it's a common court thing. They reverse it because of the quotient rule. They don't want to confuse kids. And like, oh, now just change the sign. You guys are smart enough. You don't. It doesn't matter. First, I'm really, if if you like the delta, when you go to delta and like, oh, I like this this method better. Fine, you're not going to offend anyone. You can do that as well. So look at this one. Look at example seven. It wants us to find the derivative. First, let's find the derivative with how we know. So let's expand this. So let's just expand it with. So right now we're not doing any algebra. I mean, we're not doing any calculus. We're just doing algebra. F of x equals x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth plus x squared times 3. That's going to be 3x squared. And then 1 times x cubed is going to be x cubed. And then 1 times 3 is 3. Let's put it in order from highest degree to lowest degree. x to the fifth plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3. Have we made any mistakes? Okay, that's just algebra, right? We haven't done anything? Here we go. With this is the calculus with the power rule that we learned yesterday. What is the derivative of x to the fifth? Perfect. What's the next one? 3x to the second or 3x squared. The next one 6x plus, and then that's a constant, so zero. There it is. There's my derivative. Do you guys agree? All right. According to this, the top part where it says the product rule, I could. This is a product. I can follow this rule, and I better get the same answer. So let's see if that's true. I'm going to change my colors. I'm going to go to blue, and I'm going to say using product rule. So I'm going to rewrite the original equation. F of x equals x squared plus one x cubed plus 3. I'm going to underline the first and double underline the second. So the first is like a u. The second is like a v. Are we okay? All right, here we go. f prime of x. It says, according to my rule up there, it says first. So I'll write my first. x squared plus 1. And then it says dvdx. So that means derivative of the second. What's the derivative of x cubed plus 3? 3x squared plus, and then it says the second, so I write x cubed plus 3 times the root of the first, which is 2x. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do algebra now. I want to see if that really is like the same in red. So let's see. 3x squared times x squared, that is going to be 3x to the fourth power. 3x squared times 1, that's going to be 3x squared plus 2x times x cubed, that's going to be 2x to the fourth power. 2x times 3, that's going to be 6x. All right, let's put it in order, combine like terms. 3x to the fourth plus 2x to the fourth. 5x to the fourth. Yeah, I'm just combining like terms. And then the next degree is the 3x squared. And then the next is the 6x. Did I get the same derivative? Yeah, if you were to actually have this question, 
would you do product row? I would probably just expand it and then take a derivative. But this is just, yeah, instead of showing you a proof, this is just showing that it works. There is a proof for this, but the proof looks really ugly. So instead of like knowing where this came from, like where it derived, it just came from the limit process. This is way better. Well, it's not the proof. A math professor will probably say this is trash. Uh, they would probably want you to do the, the proof, but this is good enough. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Where the what? Uh, are you talking about this one? Three x squared times x squared is three x to the fourth, no? Oh, that's I did I did the rule. It says first it says u. Well, this is my u, so here's my u, and then it says times derivative of the second. That's what dv dx is. This is my v. The derivative of x cubed is three x squared, so this is my dv dx. Dv dx. That's the derivative of the second. Plus the second, this is my v. Times the derivative of the first, this 2x is your du dx. Do you see what we did there? No? No, look. Uh, all I'm doing, they're telling you what u is. U, look, I'm going to put it here on the side. U is x squared plus 1. Yes or no? V is, what is V? X cubed plus 3. So now look, if I just go here to the side, I'm going to write du dx. What's the derivative of u respect to x? 2x. dv dx. What's the derivative of v respect to x? 3x. There it is. That's all I'm doing. u, x squared plus 1. There it is. Times dv dx, the 3x squared, there's the dv dx, 3x squared. Plus the second, x cubed plus x plus 3, which is your v, there it is, times the derivative of the first, which is uh, du dx. I'm doing this rule. Does that make sense, Gonzalez and Tavar? Tavar? All I'm doing is this, that I'm circling here in green, right? And I'm identifying what is u. u is this expression here. u is x squared plus 1. See? This expression, x cubed plus 3, that's your v. v is x cubed plus 3. Right? Okay, now check this out. Now, I'm going to take the derivative of u here on the side, just by itself. du over dx. What's the derivative of x squared plus 1? Yeah, you say it up. It's loud and proud. 2x, right? All right, look at this. dv dx. What's the derivative of x cubed plus 3? Perfect. 3x squared. And all I'm doing is this rule right here, Tavar. So check it out. I'm going to change my color to blue real quick. It says u, so I write what u is. So I'm going to write my derivative, f prime x, equals my u, which is this, x squared plus 1. And then look, it says dv dx times dv dx. I come and I look. Here's my dv dx, so 3x squared. So I put 3x squared. There's a plus symbol, so I put a plus. And then it says v, so I look for v, and I write x cubed plus 3. And then it says du dx, so I look for du dx, and I write 2x. Do you see what I did there step by step? I'll do, we'll do it some more. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 we'll do, we'll do a whole bunch. Look, here's another one. <coughs> Maybe you'll like this better. Let the y equals uv be the product of the functions u and v. Find y prime of 2 if u of 2 equals 3, u prime of 2 equals negative 4, v of 2 equals 1, and v prime of 2 equals 2. All right, everything has the value at 2, so I'm not going to even bother putting it at 2. Here it is, product rule y prime equals first u times derivative of the second I'm gonna write v prime plus second v times derivative of the first u prime all I did was a rule are we okay 
All right. All I'm going to do now is just plug the values from that table or from that they give me. Y prime at 2 equals what is u of 2? So I write 3. That is u of 2. What is v prime of 2? Or, yeah, 2. 2. That's v prime of 2. Plus, what is v of 2? 1. That is v of 2. What is u prime of 2? Uh, yes. u prime of 2. And that's it. All I did was a rule. So 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. What do you guys think? Nothing crazy, right? What do you think, Tavar? It's just a rule. It's just a definition. So I don't want you to be like, uh, like, where does this coming from, blah, blah, blah. It's just like in English, when they give you a definition, they give you a word, they're just defining it. So this is just a definition. We're just defining it. We're not doing any proof, like, where it comes from or anything like that. Cool or not cool? Okay. So there's another rule, but I won't talk about it unless you guys feel comfortable with the product rule. There's another rule called the quotient rule. Do we feel enough, comfortable enough with the power rule that we can go to the quotient rule? Okay. So there's a little song, because I know you guys like songs, and we're going to sing it. So here's the quotient rule. As long as the denominator is not zero, I have a top and I have a bottom. The U is the top, the V is the bottom. Cool or not cool? And here's how you know the derivative of this, if it's a quotient. Bottom times the derivative of the, oh, I'm going to say it normal and then we'll sing it. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over bottom squared. Okay, so here's the song. I saw it on YouTube. I, I can't take credit for it. YouTube calls a fraction. They go, this is on high, this is H, and this is on low because it's the bottom one. So they call high and low. And they go, low D high minus high D low over low, low. And then the D stands for derivative. Low, bottom, D high, the derivative of the top, minus high, D low, derivative of the bottom, over bottom squared. If you like it, that's fine. I know it doesn't sound like a song, right? You're like, that's not a song. Low, D high, minus high, D low, over low, low. Say it. Low, D high, low D high minus high, D low, high D low, over low, low, low. All right, let's do it again one more time. Low, D high. Minus high D low over low low. All right, so let's see if we can put this into practice. What's on top? What's on high? The, the top is the x squared minus 1. So the my high is x squared minus 1. What's on the bottom? The x squared plus 1. I'm about to take a derivative. You guys ready? F prime of x, and I'm going to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to use my low D high definition. So low, you just say low, oh, okay, so the bottom, x squared plus 1. D high, oh, that means I'm taking a derivative because I said the word D. So what's the derivative of x squared minus 1? 2x minus high, oh, okay, the top, x squared minus 1. D low, so that means I'm taking the derivative of the bottom, so I'm going to write what? 2x over low, low, so that means x squared plus 1 squared. Low D high minus high D low over low, low. So next time you go to a club, go, yeah, low D high minus high D low over low, low. Okay, maybe that was, maybe you guys don't have experience with that, so never mind. Sorry, guys. Next time you guys go to grade school, uh, okay, that was stupid. I'm going to stop talking now. Do we understand what we just did? All we did was a procedure... We did not do anything with proofs or anything. All we did was like a definition. This is, the, this is like the equivalent to an English or in science, them giving you terms, and you just giving the definition. Does that make sense? 
So it's okay if you're a robot for this because all you're doing is mechanics. Yay? Okay, here we go. I have a question. It says, I want the tangent line of this curve at the point 1, 2. They want me to find this tangent. It's a quotient, so I got to use what rule? The quotient rule, because the only way to get my slope is to take a derivative. Do we understand that? All right, here we go. I'm going to write, I'm going to put quotient rule. Well, you can actually do, well, no, that's the best way. So here we go. Quotient rule, and then I'm going to put in parentheses to find slope. That's what we're doing. So I'm going to write y prime, yes. You can, but that would take forever with this because there's an x squared on the top and there's a 2x on the bottom. So it would take a lot of algebraic manipulation. You guys ready? So the question that she asked is, can I use the f of x plus h minus f of x over h? Yes, you can, but it would take forever. That's why we have these rules. Okay. Low d high. So tell me what do I write? 2x. 2x. Does everyone know where that 2x came from? The derivative of the top. Low d high minus oh, x, squared plus three. x squared plus 3 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2, two all over bottom squared. So write 2x, put it square on it like that. That's my derivative. Now to find my slope, and I'll go slow because I can see you guys writing. To find my slope, I insert x equals 1. So I'm going to write a new line, y prime of 1, and I'm just going to insert a 1 in there. So if I insert a 1 in here and a 1 in here, that's going to be 2 times 2. And what's 2 times 2? 4 minus, if I insert a 1 for the x squared plus 1, uh, x squared plus 3, sorry. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. And 4 times 2? 8. Over, if I answer to 1, 2 times 1 is 2. And now I square it. What's 2 squared? 4. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4 over 4. So my slope is negative 1. Does everyone see how I got that slope? All right. Here is my tangent line. Do I got room enough? Yeah, I got room on the side here. My tangent line, use your point slope form. y minus 2 equals negative 1, parenthesis, x minus 1. Close it. If you are prone to making mistakes, you can leave it like that. If it says solve for f of x, then that means solve for y. Like, get it by itself. Let's look how it, see how it looks at Desmos. What's up, Abdul Kareem? How did I know that? What was the slope? For what? They, yeah, they gave me the y value already. They didn't have to. I could have plugged in a 1 in here. 1 plus 3 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. Yeah, for my point slope form. They didn't have to give me the y value. They could have just given me the x. I want my tangent at x equals 1, and I would have had to figure out the y value. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, I can't click on this Desmos button. Okay. I was hoping it was hyperlinked. It is not. Desmos. All right. Hook me up with the equation, guys. What was it? Y equals what? The original. x squared, oh, it's a fraction, right? Let me put the fraction, okay. x squared plus 3 all over 2x. So let's see if it really looks like a tangent. You guys ready? So at 1, 2, I want to see that point before I even put it in. So here's how you tell Desmos to show the point first. 1, 2. Does everyone see that point? So I better have a tangent line. It's going to have a negative slope like that. So we're already looking pretty good because we did get a negative slope. So uh, let's go ahead and put it in. Y minus what? 2 equals 
negative 1, parenthesis, x minus 1. Look at that. Oh, well, now you can look at it. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? It definitely looks like a tangent. Cool, right? All right. Let's see what else we got. All right, we already talked about this. This is higher order derivatives, second derivative, third derivative. All right, so now we know product rule, we know quotient rule. All we need to do, do now is get experience. That's the only way we're going to get really good. Actually, we have a handout, but uh, for now, we're just going to wait for you guys to catch up. Uh, if you're here for the second half, you'll have a handout because I didn't print it out. Uh, are you guys ready for this? All right, so it says, suppose that u and v are functions of x and their differential board x equals 0. And, that, and they give me these values. They're all at x equals 0. Find the values of the following derivatives at x equals 0. Okay, letter A. I have a product. What rule do I got to use for that derivative? Product rule. That's actually what it's called, just product rule. So tell me the product rule. It's first times derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first. I put a little primes. So if you don't like the primes, you can put dvdx. It's the same. So here we go. What is u of 0? 5, so put 5. What is v prime of 0? So put a 2. Plus, what is v of 0? Put a negative 1. What is u prime of 0? Negative 3. So my final answer is, let's see, 10 plus 3. So 13, that's the derivative value of that product. Do we feel good? All right. Look at the next one, letter B. I have U over V, so I have to use what rule? Quotient rule. Are you guys ready? Tell me what to write. Lodi high, so I put V U prime, low D high, minus U V prime all over low squared, low, low. Now let's plug in. What is v of 0? Uh, yeah, negative 1. What is u prime of 0? Negative 3 minus. What is u of 0? What is v prime of 0? All over. What is v of 0? Negative 1 and put a square. All right, let's see what this is. Negative 1 times negative 3, and I'm kind of encroaching into letter D here, so let me put it here. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. 5 times 2 is 10. So 3 minus 10 over 1. So my final answer is negative 7. All right. Here we go. Letter C. V over U. Who cares what it's called? We're doing quotient rule again. Bottom times to the top or low D high minus high D low over low low. So well, tell me what to write. Let me put it in blue so we don't confuse it with the top part. Bottom, there are U times V prime minus, perfect. So over U squared. How do we feel? Now let's plug in these values. What was u of 0? 5. What was v prime of 0? 2. What was v of 0? Negative 1. What was v, uh, u prime, sorry. What was u prime of 0? All over, what was u of 0? So let's see what this answer is. 5 times 2 is 10 minus negative times the negative of the positive. So it's 10 minus 3 over 5 squared is 25. So there's going to be a fraction. 7 over 25. Are we okay? All right. Last one. 
So sometimes kids have a hard time with this one, guys, even adults at the university, because I remember tutoring someone that I thought he was a pretty sharp kid. Well, he's not a kid. He was like 23, 24. Pretty sharp guy. But he kept asking, like, but seven's a constant. So can we do a product? You can if you want, but you're taking more work. So don't write this down. Just listen. You see how you have seven times V? And he had just learned the product rule, and he was adamant. It's seven times V. I want to use product. And I'm like, okay, go ahead. If you do product, don't write this down. It is correct. It's just very long. If you were to do the product rule for 7V, I'm just doing 7V. It would go first times the root of the second plus the second times the root of the first. And the root of a 7 is 0. And notice that you just get 7V prime anyways. Do you guys see that? So that's why you don't do product rule with, with this because you're going to get the same rule anyways. So here's what you do write down. The derivative, and I'll change my color to black. The derivative of 7v minus 2u is simply 7v prime minus 2u prime. And that's it. All right. I know that some of you guys are looking at it like, what? I don't understand. Don't, uh, don't write this down. Just listen. Remember when you learned... Uh, where are you? Right. Not the product rule. Remember when you learned the power rule yesterday? Okay. Uh, okay, right here. You see this right here, how I said the derivative of what's the derivative of 5x squared? And then we wrote the 5, and then we wrote the derivative of x squared right there. This right here is, if, if x squared were u, if u equals x squared, u prime equals 2x. So that right there is like u prime. Do you guys see that? If this were 7x cubed, if I were to tell you that u equals x cubed, then u prime equals 3x squared. So look, there's my 7, and that 3x squared is like your u prime. Do you guys see that? I'll go slow again. So like what I'm telling you is this. It's like saying 7u d dx. What's the derivative of that? You're going to tell me, well, that's 7u prime. See? Just like u is x cubed, u prime is 3x squared, 7, that 3x squared is u prime. So that right there is 7 u prime. Do you see that? Kind of, kind of, okay. If you can kind of see that, then you're good. It's okay. Look, we're throwing a lot of stuff at you. It's okay to be confused, guys. We just threw two rules at you. They're just definitions. So what is the derivative of 7v? 7v prime. What is the derivative of 2u? 2u prime. That's it. So let's see what that is. 7 times what's v prime? v prime is 0. 2 minus 2 times what's u prime is 0? Negative 3. So 7 times 2 is 14. Negative times a negative is a positive, so positive 6. So that is going to be 20. How do we feel? All right. I didn't print out the handouts, guys. Uh, do you guys want to practice on delta math first before the handout or do you want the handout before the delta math it doesn't matter uh probably when we come back monday so practice first for the seventh period yeah so practice first on delta with a product rule the easy ones level one put the level one product level one quotients just so we can get the hang of it okay so that's what i'm going to do guys i'm going to put level one all the easy ones because what, for the power rule, I gave you the hard ones, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, but for the product and quotient, I'm just going to put the easy ones in there. So you should not be having a hard time. You're just applying the rule. Cool? Hey, Valencia, if you're watching this, uh, hello. Uh, everyone is missing you, uh, but you're in our hearts. So that's what matters. I hope you're uh, doing well, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Later, Valencia. Bye.